rectal insufflation. <laughs> there you go. I said it so that you don't have to. Today we're going to jump into all the cracks and crevices, the nooks and crannies of rectal insufflation. Not a very glamorous subject, but I'm trying to make light of it um, because there's a lot of information. A lot of scientists have said this is one of the most effective ways to do ozone therapy. So who am I to dismiss it? We're going to jump into what it is, how it affects the body, how it might affect the microbiome, what it does on a systemic level. So stay tuned because we're going to jump into rectal insufflation. You might be wondering, who is this guy that's telling me about rectal insufflation? Is he qualified to tell me about rectal insufflation ozone therapy? Well, no, which is the reason I went to all the scientists and research and literature to find what they said about ozone therapy. And if you don't know who I am, I'm the ozonaut. Obviously, I have t-shirts. <laughs> I'm just passionate about ozone therapy. I want to inform people about this option. Not necessarily that they have to buy into it or do it, you know, just to lay the information out there before you so that you can make a decision on what you want to do with your health. Your health is like a bucket. It has a certain amount of capacity before it begins to overflow. So I probably have microbes and bacteria in my body. That I'm not sick right now though because my body is able to handle it. However, if I added in environmental stressors and metal toxicity and these things, I would probably start to overflow into the symptoms of chronic disease. So you need ways to empty your bucket out or to prevent it from getting full in the first place. So the important things, diet, exercise, good connection with other people are super vital. But many scientists are saying ozone therapy may be the medicine of the future because it's very easy to do at home and it takes a good case for preventing chronic disease and also reversing it. So today we're going to cover four different main points about what ozone therapy of rectal insufflation does in the body. The first one being oxygenation. The second one being regulating chronic oxidative stress or just oxidative stress. The third being immune modulation and the fourth being improving the rheology of the blood. First of all, oxygenation. If I were to ask you what is the most important element to life, you would probably respond with food or water, which makes sense, but, and you know what I'm going to say now, but if I asked you to hold your breath for a minute, you'd probably realize that oxygen is pretty dang important. And oxygenation is a very fundamental process in our body that we need. We can't live without it, obviously. But even if we have a partial reduction in oxygenation, we nurture our tissues to be able to grow things like cancer. And so we want to have a fully oxygenated body. Now, a lot of people claim, or the scientists claim, that ozone therapy is able to actually increase oxygen efficiency. So this isn't the amount of oxygen that's in the body. That would be like increasing the amount of oxygen would be like hyperbaric oxygen, where it's forcing the oxygen into the interstitial fluids into the lymph. Ozone therapy is just increasing the efficiency, the use of the oxygen. So that's important because not only are we getting oxygen in, but we're also using it well. So if there were two different basketball players, one I told you made 20 baskets in a game and the other made 18 baskets in the game, and I asked which one was better, you would probably say the one that made 20. But if I told you that he made 100 baskets or shot 100 baskets that game and made 20, whereas the other one shot 18 baskets and made 18, the guy who made 18 baskets would be better because he's much, much more efficient. And so we want to be efficient with our use of oxygen. We want to be efficient with how our body metabolizes because that's going to give us an increase in energy, a reduction of brain fog, more clarity, and an increase in energy, which are three symptoms that a lot of people notice when they do ozone therapy. Now, the second thing is ozone therapy's ability to regulate oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is widely attributed as a cause of aging. As we get older, we have more oxidative stress. As we're chronically ill, we have more oxidative stress. We don't really want that. Our body is supposed to respond with an antioxidant response. When we go and exercise, we're actually stimulating oxidative stress, but our body should respond with an antioxidant response. So as we get out of balance, out of whack, we get a lot of oxidative stress on a cellular level, and we don't necessarily want this. So it's very interesting because ozone is an oxidant. So you might be wondering, why would I use an oxidant to regulate oxidative stress? Well, when they send ozone in by rectal insufflation or whatever they do, it actually stimulates a mild acute oxidative stress. So it stimulates a little bit more, but the body is able to recognize that. And then it rebalances with an antioxidant response and starts to reverse that chronic oxidative stress that we don't want. So it's a very fascinating subject because it's using basically the hair of the dog, so to speak, to treat the disease.
The third thing is that ozone therapy claims to be able to modulate the immune system. Now, there's a lot of interesting things with this because most things that we take might either boost or suppress the immune system, or that's what a lot of drugs do. Whereas ozone therapy just goes in and stimulates the immune system to kind of wake up and do whatever it needs to do better. So if there's an autoimmune disorder where your immune system is attacking your body, it can help to quiet it down. Now, if there's an immune suppressed cancer patient, it can help to boost the immune system. So it has a very homeostasis effect on the immune system. And there's been a lot of interesting case studies. You can see one here where Dr. Robert Rowan was treating a patient who had a severe autoimmune disorder and exclusively with ozone therapy was able to reverse that. Um, so very fascinating on its ability to work with the immune system. And here's another one of a patient uh, through AMA skincare who had a immune suppression. So that's on the other side of the autoimmune disorder and it's able to raise up his immune system to be able to fight that disease. Now, the fourth thing that ozone therapy via rectal insufflation claims to do is actually improve the rheology of the blood. So the rheology, there's a number of different things. There's like viscosity, there's the ability of the cells to be able to bend and fold to fit through the small capillaries. So the rheology of the blood is actually a pretty big subject. But ozone therapy claims to be able to improve the rheology of the blood so that it can flow through our body better, better so it's not sticking like molasses would. Uh, and we're able to get better nutrient and gas exchange to tissues that typically wouldn't get that. So if we have tissues that are deprived of nutrients or adding up on byproducts, we want blood to be able to get there so that it can make an exchange of the oxygen to the tissue that would need it and then also take some of the byproduct that that tissue is, is trying to eliminate. And so the rheology of the blood is very important and a lot of people don't realize that this is a much larger problem um, contributing to things like inflammation, circulatory issues, malnourishment to the organs and tissues, and chronic disease. So ozone therapy is actually claimed to improve the rheology of the blood, the ability of the blood to flow throughout the body, and give good nutrient exchange to tissues that need it. And you might be wondering, well, how the heck does ozone via rectal insufflation actually produce a systemic effect on the body? Wouldn't it just stay in the colon or cause something going on there? And that's a good question. Basically, the ozone interacts with the mucoproteins or, you know, the, uh, the filmy layer in the colon, and it creates reactive oxygen species and lipid peroxides. And those are pulled into the colon, the intestinal wall, into the portal vein. They go up to the liver, and it's distributed throughout the body. Now, the oxygen is actually absorbed into the colon wall, too. They can actually measure an increase in oxygen after somebody does a rectal insufflation, an increase of oxygen in their blood. So it's very interesting that it's actually able to absorb into the intestinal wall and be used throughout the entire body. Now, another question that a lot of people have is what is ozone therapy's effect via rectal insufflation on the microbiome? Because according to Dr. Zach Bush, we're supposed to have about 30,000 different bacterial species in our gut for it to be healthy. So we need a lot of those good bacteria for us to be healthy. We have a symbiotic relationship with them. So you wouldn't want to do something that's actually going to harm that because that's only going to make further issues. It was interesting when I was looking into this because there was like Dr. Velio Bacci who said it has an equilibrium effect on the colon, which doesn't make sense because you're putting a very strong oxidant into a anaerobic without oxygen environment that a lot of the bacterial species would, you would think, would not like. Um, but he didn't really cite anything on that. So I had to dive a little bit deeper and see, well, why does he think this? And what I came across was there was a study done with 34 patients who had dysbiosis, which is an imbalance of the gut biome, essentially. And after 90 days of ozone therapy, they actually saw a reversal of dysbiosis using rectal insufflation with ozone therapy. So it makes, I don't understand exactly why um, it would do this because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my head. But clinically, they're seeing that they can actually reverse gut issues and it has, as Dr. Bocci said, an equilibrium effect on the gut. And at this time, I would say there's more research needed in this area. There's just not a lot of great stuff out there that I'm aware of. Um, in, in theory, in my head, it's possible that it's just a small amount of gas, so it's not traveling up the colon, it's not going anywhere. Most of the ozone and oxygen is absorbed into the gut and the rest of it's just kind of expelled. So it doesn't have a negative effect on the gut biome and for some reason stimulates a positive effect in the bacteria there. 
You might want some more details, and if you do, I actually wrote an article on this citing all the sources that I went through for it. So just click the link below in the description of this video to see the full article on ozone therapy, rectal insufflation, and all the de details thereof. And if you're interested in how to do rectal insufflation ozone therapy, there's another link in the description of this video that'll take you right to another video that shows how people tend to do this kind of thing. So there's a few things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a generator, uh, a regulator, an oxygen tank, and the administration supplies, which are like the catheters. Now it's really quite easy to do once you get set up and going with it. The hardest part is getting the oxygen tank um, and basically you need to be able to get a prescription. Some people choose the commercial grade oxygen, which is rated for the same grade of oxygen. You can read on all that. But it's important to note that there's a number of different generators out there. You don't typically want to go below 500 because those are, they're taking things out of the generator that they shouldn't cheapening it. Um, usually 500 or above is more of a laboratory grade ozone generator that you can use for things like this. So I hope this video was helpful for you. We covered a rectal insufflation. We got into the nooks and crannies and the cracks and crevices of this subject. And I hope it was helpful. Please like the video. If you know somebody that could benefit from this, please share it. And as always, thank you.